you on another Shabbat day. Thank you, Yah, for waking us up this morning, clothing our white hope line of strength. We thank you, Yah, for bringing us safely, safely over the highways and the byways, oh Yah. We thank you, Yah, for this blessed day that Thou has made. Help us to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh Yah, we thank you for sparing our lives through another week. Um, ask that you will continue to go with us, go before us, bless our family, our friends, and our loved ones. Be with those that are on the way this day, that we will come together and have a great time in thee, O oh Yah, that we will lift up your holy name, sing praises and honor, and, and hear a word from thee, O oh Yah, on this, on this blessed day. O oh Yah, thank you for this day of rest. We pray that you be with the speaker today of Shabbat school, that you would bless him and anoint him from on high, and that you would speak to him and speak through him, we pray. We thank you so much for all you are and all you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians five seventeen and eighteen. Therefore, if any man be in Hamashiach, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. He said eighteen. Mm -hmm. And all things are of Yahuwah who have reconciled us to himself by Yahushua Mashiach and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. 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 All right, so, um, therefore, if any man be in Hamashiach, a Messiah, he is a new creature. And the old man has passed away. The old creature has passed away. And then it says, Behold, or, and I'm reading from the scripture of the Bible, it says, See, all manner have become renewed. Amen. So when we come into the knowledge and understanding of our Savior, we understand that we receive his atoning work. Uh, uh, we become new creatures, or new creations. Uh, we're renewed from our old ways into a new way of life. Amen. Amen. And uh, 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 so, um, but then it, then it says, and all all this reach all matters, all matters are are from Elohim, who is restored us, or who has restored us to favor with Himself through Yahweh uh, uh, Messiah, uh, Mashiach Messiah, and has given us the service. And here it says of restoration. Uh, to favor. So in other words, uh, we are called to, we all have a ministry to reconcile others back to our Savior. Right? So we all have that. That calling is upon every believer, not just, as I said uh, before in recent lesson, it's not just to pastors and mores and, you know, it's to every, it's all of us who, are, are, who embrace this and come into this truth, that we have a responsibility Scriptures do tell us, so freely as I give unto you, so freely give. So we we have a commission to give. I can take this word off now. So, um, Amen. 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 So, um, so we all have a ministry of reconciliation. We all have a, 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 a we are required to witness and to uh, uh, bring people into the light of our Savior, all right? And so um, I'm just going to touch on what was said the other night just while I, before I go into the final scriptures that I have. Um, having understanding um, when we're dealing with the scriptures, um, having understanding, we, the, the, the question came up, and the question was about uh, uh, Acts 38, and I just wanted to just touch on that, not to, uh, uh, for clarification, not 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 for uh, uh, debate or rebuttal or anything like that, but just for clarification that, and hopefully that we have the understanding that um, um, that uh, when we read when we read the text, we have to know that. Have you ever read a, a scripture and you got one thing out of it and then sometime later on in, in, in your walk, or, or you read the same scripture 
and you got something different out of it. You see what I mean? So you got a different understanding, but you knew it was true. And, and it didn't take away from what you already understood from it, because that's what you received at the time when you first read it. But that's not the rest why the scriptures say that the word of of Yah is what? Alive and quick and sharp as a two-edged sword. So we know, we know that because it's alive, things that are alive continue, they grow. They, just like we're alive and we continue to grow and, and, and in our understanding, our knowledge as we continue to seek the face of the Most High. And even just in the natural, you know, we start out as babes and we grow, you know, until we come into adulthood. So in the, in the same manner, as we read, so Acts 2.38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of uh, uh, that, uh, um, Hamashiach, and you shall receive, the, uh, for the permission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of, uh, of the Holy Ghost, of the Ruach HaKadosh. And so, with that being said, the question was, what order, but do you believe that, uh, 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 do you have to be baptized uh, uh, in order to receive the Ruach, or be set apart? And the answer was no, <laughs> but in explanation, it went on and went into a whole uh, uh, a dialogue about that, that particular text. Okay. And so what my, my response or my understanding would be is that, and if, if anyone has a different understanding, please be free to say so, would be that uh, from, from reading the scriptures and knowing, you know, and, and, and seeing the process through the scriptures, we know that... Uh, uh, Cornelius' household, uh, Peter was preaching in Acts chapter 10, and Peter was preaching, it says, while Peter yet spoke, they were set apart, they were filled with the Ruach, and then they were baptized. See, so we have that understanding. Then again, uh, uh, there were those that, uh, the 12 in Acts chapter 19, I'm not going to the scripture because that's not the focus of the lesson, but in Acts chapter 19, uh, 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 there were 12 disciples of John the Baptist. And, they, and so Paul says to them, if you notice something, you discern something, you say, have you received the Ruach since you believe? So, so that lets us know that you can believe at one point, but that doesn't mean you get set apart, you get filled with the Ruach at that particular time. But you should seek for it. You should, you should desire it because we want to be filled with his spirit. Um, and and so, so what happened? He witnessed to him. He said, what thing were you baptized? We baptized unto John's baptism. He said, well, John baptized uh, until repentance, you know, he said, but there came one after him who baptized the Holy, Holy Ghost or Ruach and fire, right? And so then it says, then they what? They went back in and got baptized in the name. And then it says, when they laid hands on Paul, laid hands upon them, they began to speak. They were filled to begin to speak in other tongues. So we understand that. So, this, so Acts 2.38 is not, you know, necessarily in that order that, you're gonna, that it's going to happen. So I just wanted to clarify that, and I'm sure... You know, you've been, you, you, most of you know that anyway, but I just wanted to clarify it because the dialogue just went on and on and on, and you know, but the, but the, you, and, and, and uh, uh, Moray brought out the fact that, like, well, what's the point, <laughs> you know, and trying to get to the point of what is really being said. So um, with that, I'm going to move on. Give me Psalms 19 and 7. I'll read this if I can find it fast enough. This Bible has, this is the Bible I said that has the names on both sides. The law of Yah is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yah is sure, making wise the simple. Mm. So the law or the Torah of Yah is what? Perfect. perfect. Bringing back, and this, this is not just my verse, bringing back the being, okay? The witness of Yah is trustworthy, making wise the simple. So if we just just think about it, if we're dealing, if we're witnessing to someone, and we know, and they have really have no understanding or been introduced to the scriptures, if we so if we use wisdom, we can have, we can actually bring them into some kind of understanding or at least a desire to want to know. 
you know what I mean? But we come with, you know, my first ministry was all children, you know? So I had to really keep it simple, you know? And, and, and so that's how I, so, so as my ministry grew, I kept it simple. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't use a lot of big words and all that, you know, because, you know, the, the, my audience was young people, you know? But then as, as of course, their parents began to come and they began to grow. But I found that when, you know, it, the scripture says that the scriptures, even a child can understand them. So, uh, 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 so the law, it says here that the law of God is trustworthy, making wise the simple, making those that are unlearned, if we come in wisdom and not come in our intellect, you know, because it, it just depends on who the audience we're talking to. I mean, if you if you had to speak a, a lecture, right, you're not going to, you, you're going to prepare that, 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 uh, uh, what do they do in a lecture? They read, right? You're going to prepare that, whatever you're presenting, in a way, if you're in, if you're in college, you're going to use a certain intellect so that you can reach those college students. You know what I mean? But if you go into, a, 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 say, a fifth grade, or, you know, fourth, fifth grade, you're going to present it in a way that they can understand it. So we have to use wisdom in how we present ourselves and how we how we share this 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 uh, uh, the scriptures with other people that are in darkness that, that don't have the understanding. So I mean, this morning I read and I read it straight as it was written, and you know, and and, and because you never know what audience you're going to deal with, you never know what audience you're going to deal with. And even though I can speak in, you know, if I, I if I spoke as if I was speaking at a college, and I spoke it in in a, a setting that didn't have that type that level of education then they would be lost at the words I'm using. And Paul said, I'd rather speak 10,000, I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather speak a few words in understanding than 10,000 words in tongues. He said, I speak in tongues more than all of you. But you know, that's not the issue. If I preach a whole message in tongues and give a benediction, you all would just say, well, this, you, what's going on? <laughs> you know, what's going on? You know, we, didn't get, we didn't get nothing out of that. You know what I mean? So we have to be wise in our presentation. So, but the, but um, verse seven says the Torah or the law of, of Yah is perfect. It's perfect, and if we present it in that manner, it's going to accomplish. Then he say, uh, "My word that goes out of my mouth will not return unto me what void." That, that's um, Psalms nineteen and seven. <laughs> that's all right. So he said, my word that goes out of my mouth will not return unto me void, but will what accomplish. Whatever his word goes out. That's why even in Christianity, when we heard the word, it accomplished things in us. We didn't have the fullness of the truth. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 you know, it was a deceptive uh, 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 teaching, but at the same time, his word did things for us. His word came alive in us. His word delivered us. His word, you know, there's certain times we have testimonies of things that we, we experienced even then that, you know, we know were a testimony. They weren't something we made up. We knew that he had moved in our lives. So his word is alive. So it's always going to, it's always going to hit its mark. It may not hit it when you want it to. <laughs> it may not hit it when I want it to. But when the most high word goes out, it accomplishes that which he desires it to do. All right? So now let's 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 go to um, Acts chapter two. No, I, I did that. One. We're not going to go there. We're going to go to Acts nine and nineteen. That was Acts two thirty eight. We went over that already. That's what got us uh, that wonderful dissertation. Acts nine, Acts nine nineteen through twenty two. Yes, please. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached a Mashiach in the synagogue, that he is the son of Yah. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem? And came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests. But Saul increased the more in strength, and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Yeshua. Okay, so who, who, who was Saul? 
in the beginning. He was an enemy of the Messiah. And he had, he had it in his heart. You couldn't have told him that he was wrong because he was a student of the law. He said he studied under the, at the feet of Gamil. He said, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees. So Saul, he, 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 he knew, you know, he knew the law. And according to his own understanding, he was doing the right thing. And no one could convince him that he wasn't because he had a hatred for unrighteousness. Then David said, I hate those that hate thee with a perfect hatred. There's a hatred that was not towards one another, but if someone hates the most high, right. then I can hate them with a perfect hatred because they're rejecting our Savior. They rejected our creator. So David said, I hate them with a perfect hatred, which is probably not, we know who the judge is, but there's, there's a time to love and there's a time to hate. To hate. All right? And so spreading lies and heresy. Huh? Said, yeah, especially when you believe they're spreading lies. Exactly. And heresy and heresy. Spreading lies and, and that's right. And, and, and uh, committing, uh, what do you call abominations and blasphemy. You know, we, we, we hate that because the most I hate sin, doesn't he? And he hates sin because it separates us from him. Okay? So, um, so then it um, says here, uh, let me glass it. I'm going to keep my glasses on. It's right. It's wrong. Okay, so it says, and having received food, he was strengthened. And where was this? This was after what? After he had uh, 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 been delivered uh, uh, and by, by Ananias. And then he was filled with the spirit. But then it says, and immediately he fell from it. it okay. When he was prayed for by Ananias, that he was blinded. We know he was blinded. I call it uh, knocked off his high horse, blinded, and put on a three-day fast. So that's exactly what the order was when, when Saul was converted. And after being after those three days, Ananias came, and I'm at verse 18. Says, and immediately there fell from his eyes, and and the scales, as it were scales, and he received his sight, and raising up, he was Im immersed. I mean, he was he was he was immersed. And having received food, strengthened while he had been on a three-day fast, and Saul was with, uh, uh, with the top ones at Damascus uh, some, some days. And immediately he proclaimed the Messiah in the congregation that he was son of Elohim. So Saul here now, the enemy of, 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 of our Messiah, enemy, you know, but also believing that he was doing it in righteousness, that he was doing the right thing because anything that came up against the Most High, you know, we're supposed to defend, okay? But now he's been converted, he's been immersed, and then it says, it also talks about him being set apart, right? And so once that happened, his eyes were open. You know, I remember years ago preaching a message, blinded to see the light. Sometimes the Most High got to blind us in order for us to see the truth. You know what I mean? So, matter of fact, we were blind in Christianity for the most part. Like I said, his word accomplished what it needed to accomplish to get us where we're at today. But at the same time, we didn't have the fullness of the truth. And we could, you know, if he hadn't brought us out, then we would fall in that ditch with the rest. You see? So, but because uh, uh, he opened our eyes, so here he was, he was blinded, he was put on a three-day fast, and, 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 and his pride was taken down when he knocked him off his what? Off his high horse. So then he put him on a three-day fast and blind him. So all he could do was focus on the most high. And so now it says, and he and, and they and when they heard, you know, when they heard it, they said they were amazed. And they said, Is not this the destroyer, those calling, the destroyer of those calling on the name of uh 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 uh, uh, uh it says here Yasharala, okay, and has come here for this to take them bound so they were more afraid of him because of his reputation in in uh, 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 gathering them together what was he doing taking them and having them locked up put in you know put in prison some having them tortured so he was he said I'm gonna wipe out this whole you know at the time the, in the, all those that walk in the way all those that walk in that way he was like I'm, I'm crushing this I'll take care he went to the Pharisees and got a letter got permission to go out and, and gather our people and, 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 and uh, uh, punish us. And trying to wipe out the, the, uh, the, the, what was called the way at that time. So, um, but then it says, he kept increasing in strength and was confounding uh, uh, the Yahudim 
who dwelt in Damascus, providing, I mean, proving that this is the Messiah. So he, so at that time, he didn't allow his, at that time, he didn't allow his, uh, his understanding, his education, and his knowledge as a Pharisee. He had to put all of that aside. He had to put all that away. And he had to come to them and preach Messiah, death, burial, and resurrection. And he had to do that in a way that they received him. But they were afraid, hey, this guy's coming, he, he's coming to, you know, he's, he's coming to take, collect us up and put us in prison. But no, he came in a different light. Now, why? Because he's a new, therefore, if any man be in Messiah, he's a new creature. So here now he's a new creator because he's been what the scriptures call born again. Right? He's been set apart. So now he's coming in a way where they can understand him. So it says, as he was strengthened and he increased, he increased in strength and he confounded them. He confused them. You know why? Because he, he was this educated, you know, walking Bible type guy. Knew the Torah like the back of his hand. And now all of a sudden, he's preaching the very thing and teaching the very thing that he was against. This is how the Most High works. We think about where we came from. How many remember where they came from? I remember where I came from. And it wasn't a good place. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> had fun. But yes, it sir. wasn't a good place. Yes, sir. It was not a good place, you see? And, and my lifestyle was, I look at my lifestyle now, and I, you know, I'm ashamed of it, but to the point where I know I'm forgiven, and I'm no more that creature or that person. Don't pull the wire, baby. Uh -uh. And, uh, uh, I'm not that person anymore, but if we remember where we came from, yeah. and now even even when you first came into this this walk, this this awakening, I'm sure you talked to people that you tried to witness to, and they were like, "What's up with you, man? You in a cult or something?" You know, people. It's just it's no different when when I was in Christianity, because Hamashiach said that we what? He said that I come as a sword to separate. Mother, father, sister, brother, so once, but now we're coming, we come into the, the, the fullness of the truth. We're even more excited than we was when we became Christians. Okay? Now we're in this fullness. We want it, we want everybody to get it. We want all our family to get it. We want our brothers and sisters to get it. We want to go to the Christian church. We want all of them to get it. Right? Because we're excited. So you can imagine how excited Saul was or, or, to, uh, uh, or to get this information and to turn around and you know, now he's full of the spirit and he's, he's going at it and he's witnessing and the people are like, wow, what happened to him? What happened? If you read the scripture, you know even the apostles were like a little reluctant to accept him at first because they knew who he was and they, they, were, they, they were literally running from this guy. They were hiding out from this guy because he had, he, had, he had the Pharisee soldiers with him and they were going around. They were doing damage. They were doing damage. But now he has the ability and the humility because he had to go through that humility in order to get to the place of strength that he got to in order to be an effective witness. Especially the people you've been, you know, there's folks out, there's folks out there that you know you might have had issues with, you know what I mean? And you might say, well, and the most I said, well, I want you to go witness to him. And you know, you know, you might have robbed him or something. I'm just giving a throwing a scenario out there, beat him up. You know, he said, well, I don't know. This guy might remember what happened back then. Because I, I had an incident like that where um, this guy and I got in, we was over, we was over a, a, a girl, and we got. He, he, he was he was mad, and just because I was because I was seeing her, and he was mad at me because we knew each other, but you know it was just one of those things. But anyway, <laughs> he we got into a fight in the hallway and all this stuff. So I get you know I get into the church and you know and, and I'm, I'm driving to the gas station one day, and who's at the gas pump? <laughs> And I'm saying, oh, Lord, at the time, please don't let this guy, let him be, you know, forget about whatever happened. And he jumped out the car and said, hey, man, how you doing? Man, man, man I heard you get, keep me in your prayers. And I was like, oh, thank you. Because <laughs> guess what? I lost the fight. <laughs> so he would have beat me up again. <laughs> yeah, that was so, so, you know, but, but that was my first thought was, oh, man, this guy, you know, so, but, but the most high, when you become a new creature, and, 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 and he puts you in the presence even of your enemy. Like he said, I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. You know what I mean? So he can humble the heart and then another guy owed a lot of money from cop, you know, uh, uh, cuffing drugs as we call it, you know, getting them on, 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 on put it on my bill. <laughs> and uh, 
because I always told him the truth, I would lie at first and say, oh, it's for somebody else. And then, but then I would always tell him the truth. Yeah, it was for me. You know, I, for me. So I owed him a lot of money. And so when I got clean and sober, um, I happened to still be hanging out. And I ran into him and I thought he was like, man, where's my money, brother? You know? And he just said, man, I'm proud of you. He said, I'm proud of you, man. You, you know, you, you know, you, you, you was always told me the truth, man. And now, you don't want to drink? You want to sniff? You want to You don't want nothing. I don't want nothing. I'm clean so I wasn't even in the church yet. But I'm saying that to share that, you know, how when 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 we're set apart, we have that aura, we have that light, we shine, and people are drawn to that light. But how we present that, how we present it, present it to those that we we encounter will make all the difference whether we bear fruit or not. Because we want to bear fruit. Right. You know, and I should say my fruit, you know, that's the fruit of my labor, but you know, it's really, it's the most highest fruit. <laughs> you know what I mean? We don't own anything. But, just but, caretakers. But, but we do, exactly, we're caretakers, and we do produce, even our children, we raise them up to a certain age, and we gotta let them, we got to let them in the hands of the most high. We keep them in prayer, and we'll be for them when they need us, but we know that it's like the arrow in the quiver. When the, once, the, once he takes that arrow out of that quiver, puts it in that, in, in, in that, in that uh, uh, bow. bow and arrow, he pull, he's still in control. The parent is still in control until when? He releases it. He releases it. Now, I want you to be a lawyer. I want you to be a doctor. I want you to be a, a, a marine biologist. But they may not land at that mark. They may land. They may, they may want to be an entertainer. <laughs> and most parents don't like that because we know that's a tough field. And everybody don't make it in that. Or they may want to. I know one, one sister, her son, he, 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 was, he went to college. And quit college because he wanted to be a wrestler. <laughs> he wanted to be a wrestler. But see, we don't have that control. We have to get with There comes a time when we train them up in the way they should go. And when they're older, they won't depart. So even, even those that leave, at some point, that word will bring them back that we brought them up in. And we see that and witness that all the time. There are those that stay, and there are those that leave, especially young people. And that's a problem going on in Christianity. All the young people are not staying. My my youngest daughter, she was in the church in the choir, and, and she 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 said, "I stopped going, Daddy, because we would get out the choir and go out back and smoke cigarettes and smoke weed, and then go back in and finish the service." See, so it, it, that that's the kind of uh, 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 misunderstanding that 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 people get, you know. So we want to be clear. All right, let's get this last one. Let's go to Acts twenty six. 18 to 20. I thought I had some more Acts 26, what? Acts 26, 18 to 20. Jump up. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna jump up too. Oh yeah. So this is this is uh, this is this is good. This is good. Let's let's go to. Let's, let's just go to um, this is this is a, this is a, a, a Saul or Paul's a, a testimony a witness that I believe to is it Agrippa? All right. So let's go to um, I'm gonna just start at verse just to close it out. I'm gonna start at verse. Uh, I'm gonna start at the beginning. Okay. And Agrippa said to to Saul, which is Paul, you are allowed to speak for yourself. Then Saul stretched out his hand and made his defense. I think, my, I think myself blessed, sovereign Agrippa, because today I shall make my defense before you concerning all of which I am accused of uh, by the Yahudim. But he said, you being most of all an expert, right? 
knowing of all practice and questions which have to do with the Yahudim, so please hear my my uh, patient, hear me patiently. Truly, then, all the Yahudim know my way of life from you, which I led, which I led from the beginning among my own nation of Yasharam. Uh, shall uh, since they have known me from first, if they wish, if they wish to witness, I have left lived as a Pharisee according to the uh, strictest sect of our uh, observance. And now I stand and am judged for expectation of, judged for the expectation of the promise made by Elohim, our fathers, to which our 12 tribes earnestly sovereign Elohim, uh, uh, earnestly serving Elohim night and day, expect to attain concerning this expectation, O sovereign Agrippa, I am accused by the Yahudim. Why is it considered uh, unbelievable among you of, Elo of Elohim uh, ra if Elohim raises the dead? Therefore, indeed, I thought, through, I thought within myself that I ought to do much against the name of Yahuwah of Nazareth, or uh, Yahshua of Nazareth, which also I did in uh, Yasharalim, uh, am I pronouncing that right? All right. And I shut up my mighty. I shut up many of the set apart ones in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I guess I went ahead of myself. Huh? <laughs> I gave my vote against them, and punishing them often in all congregation, all congregations, I compelled them to blaspheme made them denounce, he compelled them to denounce the Messiah, right? To blaspheme. I compelled them to blaspheme and being exceedingly in, enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities, right? While thus engaged as I was journeying, journeying to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest at midday along the, the highway, O Sovereign, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, he said they all fell, I heard a voice speaking to me saying and saying in Hebrew language, the Messiah spoke in Hebrew language, right? Saul, 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 why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the prick. And I said, who, who are you, master? And he said, I am Yahawashah, whom you persecute. But raise up and stand, or rise up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you a servant and a witness, both of what you saw and of those which I shall reveal to you, delivering you from the people and the nations to whom I now send you, to open their eyes. Now, this is the purpose. He's a witness, right? To open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and the authority of Satan to Elohim, in order for them to what? Receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are set apart by belief in me. Therefore, Sovereign Agrippa, I was not disobedient to this heavenly vision, but declared first to, to those in Damascus. So he immediately started preaching where? Right there where he was converted. I mean, he came out of there, he, got, he was immersed, uh, and Ananias uh, 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 immersed him. He was, he was filled with the Ruach, and immediately he began to, he didn't go back to, to Jerusalem, he didn't go back to the Pharisees and say, look, I changed my mind. No, he went right to work. He went right out into the field into, into the, uh, uh, the harvest and began to work. So he started at Damascus. Says he started, he started, okay. 20. 20, where's one that? Thank you. He says, and being, uns and being uncertain how to uh, investigate these matters, I asked whether he wished to go to uh, Yahu Jerusalem and there be judged concerning these matters. But when Saul appeared when, when Saul appeared to be kept 
for the decision of Agrippa, I ordained him to be kept. Is that, am I on the right one? No. I'm on the, I'm on the wrong side. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but decided, declared first to those in Damascus and in Yasharalim and in all the countries of Yahudim and to the nations. So he, he, he started there and he kept on the preaching and traveling and, 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 and bringing the word. It says, and they should, that they should repent and turn to Elohim and do works worthy of repentance. And what verse did I say? I was going to 20. 20. Yeah. Okay, that was 20. So, um, but I want, I want to hear something. Um, verse 21. That, that is why the Yahudim sees me in set, in, and the, me in the set-apart place and, and try to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from Elohim, to this day I stand wishing, witnessing, again, there's that word, witnessing both the small and great, saying none other than what the prophets and the, and the Mos and Moshe uh, or, or, or Moses said uh, would come, that the Messiah would suffer, would be the first to raise from the dead, he would proclaim light to the people and to the nations, and while saying this in his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Saul, 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 you are mad. Much learning is turning you to madness. They thought he was crazy. But Saul said, I'm not mad, much most excellent fears, but I speak words of truth and sense. For the sovereign before whom I also speak boldly know these matters, for I am persuaded that none of these are hidden from him. And he's talking about Agrippa. For this was not this, this was not been done, or this has not been done in a corner. Sovereign Agrippa, do you believe? Now he goes to the one he's witnessing to, in spite of what uh, Festus said. He said, Sovereign Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. And Agrippa said, Saul, with a little, you might persuade me to become a follower of Messiah. His witness. potentially could have saved, caused this man to convert to following the very way that he was persecuted. Because his testimony, what does the scripture say in, in, in Revelation? They overcame the dragon by the, what? The word of the testimony and the blood of the lamb, right? So now he's, he's Saul has, he's has experienced this. And he goes before the king, the king, right? And he gives his testimony. And even though Felix, who was, you know, part of that establishment, said, you out your mind. See, most people think that we're out of our mind because we've embraced this truth. And they think, like I said earlier, they think we're in a cult. And it's hard to, for them to understand it. We've been so indoctrinated in Christianity, that, and, and we've seen it as the truth for so long that our eyes are blind to the fullness of the truth. Yes, we got something out of that. Yes, we grew through that. But there's a truth that the Most High wants us. I read from the, uh, 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 Enoch this morning, and I've read that scripture here before, but it talks about there'll be, there'll be books of release in the last days that will give us joy and, 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 and that we would be excited about. Because many times the, the Most High had the, the prophets seal the books, shut up the books, he said, they're not for now, but they're for the last generation before the judgment. So there are readings and writings that we have now that give us joy. When I read, when I read that this morning, it gave me joy. Because it talked about the righteous and it talked about the, 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 the destiny of the righteous and the destiny of the wicked. Just in that one uh, chapter, 104. And he was dealing with it, but he said, there are those that are going to write and they're going to write of their own words. But then he turned around and said, but then there's, he said, but I, there's another mystery. There are books that are going to be released that are going to give the righteous joy and excitement. So that's what we want to present when we're witnessing. We want to present that witness or that, you know, we want to present this, 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 this uh, teaching in such a way that that person can be excited and have a desire and want to come to the, want to come to the assembly. You know what I mean? Now, I want to say this because I was thinking about this. It's a lot harder for us to get people to come out of Christianity. Then I can just then witness to someone on the street that, that may not have been to church. It's much harder. Why? Because we're indoctrinated. It's all we know. 
Some of us have been in it so long, that's all we know. So embracing this truth is it's a hard thing. But only the Messiah can, only the Most High can give you that, 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 uh, that desire here and here. He can give you that. He gives the increase. So we just got to keep witnessing, keep, you know, if we can keep it simple and talk to people in a way where they can, where they can embrace it, then there's a, uh, there's, there's a great uh, 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 opportunity. Now, Agrippa, he knew the law. Paul made that clear. He actually said, you, you, you believe the prophets and, 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 and Moses, right? So we know this man, he, he knew his stuff. He was, he was an Israelite. But he said, you, he, he, so I know you believe it. So, so, and he said, well, you know what? You almost convinced me to convert. Can, can, can you convince someone to convert? Can you get them there just by keeping it simple? Going to their level? There was a guy... You love this thing, don't you? I'm going to play the under the bag for whatever that thing we used to do. Number one. <laughs> but uh, there was a guy, a uh, friend of mine, and uh, I was in, you know, I was in church, and, and actually I had received a van because we were bringing so many people to this church and to service and everything. And I'm driving, and I see a friend of mine, and he had the virus. Sores on him. And I jumped out. And I thought his, his street name was Chubby. You know, and, and I jumped out. And I said, Chubb, what's going on, man? He said, hey, Tom, how you doing? You know, and uh, you know, I told him, you know, I told him I was going to church and I invited him to come to church and stuff. And you know, but then just before I left, you know, he went to reach out to shake my said, Look, give me a hug, man. Now the average person wouldn't have hugged him. I'm telling you, he had sores on his face, and you know, it just you know, that was, but I didn't put my face all up against his face, but I gave him a big hug and squeeze him, saying, I love you, man, and Jesus loves you at the time, and you know, anytime you want to go, man, just here's my number, let me know. Well, he didn't come that day, but years later, when, you know, when I, as a matter of fact, when I, I uh, uh, was, was still, I was still working in recovery, and uh, I went to school for it to get certified, and he had already been certified. He was, you no, know, he was in my class, and he was also in church. He was cleaned up, been sober for a few years, but but, but just the witness. Now, if I had rejected him, man, I could have looked at him and been like, "Yeah, man, what's good to see you, man? You know, take care. You know, I'm not touching you. I'm not hugging you. But just meeting people where they're at, showing that love, showing that love. You know what I mean? Like I said." I, I, you know, I know I know the difference. I know that his sickness was bloodborne. But I just gave him a hug, squeezed him, told him I love him. Yes. But see, that's the thing. That's where we have lost it. That's where we've lost it. I'd say we lack. I don't think we lost it, but we do lack. <laughs> Some of us have lost okay. it. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, and, and I'm being honest because there are so many of us who are coming into the truth, mm -hmm. who have lost the love. Mm -hmm. Like it said in Revelation, you have forgotten your first love. Mm -hmm. When you forgot your first love, that's just like when, for those of us that were teenagers, you had that one person. That one person in the beginning that you was like tickled pink to be around. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you was like, oh my gosh. You could sit and look at them and gaze at them just like I'm gazing at you right now. Uh -huh. And have all that love. But then life happens. Mm -hmm. Y'all separate. And then you may not see them for maybe 20 maybe 30 years, and you will have forgotten who they were. And you might see them at a class reunion, you might see them on the street, and they look totally different. And you'll be looking like, who in the world is this? And they'll sit up there and be looking at you like, you don't know me? And for a lot of us, we have forgotten the 
practice of what he who he is. He says in first John, he says, I love. Mm -hmm. And that's how you draw because of the love that was inside of you. You drew him, not just with the witness and not just with the ruach. It was a combination of all three of them mm. combined together that gave you that light, that mm. made you shine. But guess why you were shining? Because you loved that brother despite the fact he had something that he couldn't get rid of. Mm. And most people, when they see that, they were like, shy. That's right. So guess what? If you don't have that love mm -hmm. that helps bind the spirit, and the witness together. Guess oh, yes, what? Yes, oh, you yes. a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Watch out. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody else got comments? Yeah, Praises. I just want our branch over that. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's true because that's what we're supposed to do. This, we, and, and I, I touched on a little bit, but we, being in this truth, we have such a much harder task than just waiting for someone on the street. Because we're trying to get our brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in Christianity to understand that Christianity was actually designed to oppress, but they went up yeah. and hugged the person. Yeah, the guy when his brother got killed. Yeah, yeah, when his brother, brother got killed. See what I'm saying? Well, I, so, I just want to hug. Can I just hug him? Yeah, just, 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 just want to hug, right? But that, that's been entrenched in us. And guess what? It's not a bad thing to forgive. But our culture, we did not forgive our enemies. The enemies that were, was being addressed was the enemies within Israel. Because yeah. we got quarrels, we got, we fight amongst each other. Yeah. Yeah. So that was all addressed to Israel. Yeah. But Israel didn't go out and, and, and forgive the, the, the Palestinians or, 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 or the Babylonians, you know. They didn't forgive, they fought. They, 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 huh? Said it was told many times not to leave one breathing. That's exactly. Right. So we had to destroy our enemies. But that's not what today. Today, because of the dispensation, because of where we're at. Now we're not going out fighting. But I say that the, the what I want the point I want to make is the task is so much harder because it took me 20 years. My daughter's been here for 20 years. And all I did was pray for her to come out of this. You know, but she prayed for me to get the understanding, and of course, I'm here. So I lost, <laughs> you <won>. right? You <laughs> I won, <laughs> but, but you see what I'm saying? I won and she won too, yep. you know what I'm saying? But it's just hard and, and, I, and it, because people, you know, like I said, when you, as Saul believed that he, was, that he was in the truth and that he was doing the right thing by persecuting the assemblies, our people feel like they're, you know, because we've been in this Christianity so long, we feel like we're right. We got it right. I, I, you couldn't tell me I was wrong. You know, and I could preach and teach the apostolic doctrine with my eyes closed, when I sleep. And I get people, I get people to get, witness the people, get them in that water, tarry for and get filled with the Holy Ghost speaking other tongues. That was that that was my I, I love it. But to get that same person now to come into this truth, they go, what happened to you? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You just said something key. You said that you taught the apostolic doctrine, mm -hmm. which is totally different than teaching the truth of the Bible. Come on. And that's what a lot of people don't get. Mm -hmm. And the same here is in what you just read, Acts 26, mm -hmm. verse 3. Mm -hmm. Paul was talking to a group. He said, especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs. Mm -hmm and questions which are among the Jews. Right. Which is what the Jews was teaching. Their doctrines. Right. Their customs. Right. Not the Bible truth. There you go. And that's the distinction between the woke people and, and the this, people that this, still sleep. That's right. They still attach to customs and practices and there doctrines you go. and order traditions. There you go. And traditions. There you go. And supposed to the Bible truth. Whereas the people of the way that Paul was persecuting, that way meant we follow in the way of Yah. We yeah. following the truth. Mm -hmm. Y'all following customs mm -hmm. and doctrines and practices. Uh -huh. And people have to be able to discern the difference. That's right. So. Traditions of men. Many of the things that we believe in Christianity were taught were traditions of men, just like it was with the Pharisees. And, and, and Messiah made that clear to them. 
that they 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 teaching doctrines of men. So many of the things that we've embraced, you know, which kept us, you know, like I said, we grew because the word does not not return void. We were here. We hear the scriptures in in in, 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 in you know in the Christian church. We hear the scriptures, and the scriptures affect us, and they help us to grow. But when it comes to this truth, it's just that much harder for us as awakened people to try to get those who are asleep to realize that, okay, it's, it's, it's just hard. If, you, if you've been doing something for so long, some people, what they call setting their ways, Oh yeah. you know, can't teach your old dog new tricks and all that kind of stuff. But some people just setting their ways, and, and rightfully so, rightfully so. Like I said, you couldn't have told me, you couldn't have told Saul he was wrong, you couldn't have told me I was wrong. Because I believe that what I was doing was according to this book. But there's, there's a knowledge that goes beyond that which I was receiving. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a light that was shining that I couldn't see until my eyes were open. So sometimes you just got to walk in that blindness until the Most High opens your eyes, your spiritual eyes, so that you can hear and receive this truth as it is written. And, 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 and the most profound thing for me was to find out that we're the people of the book. That I, I'm, I'm thinking that should excite all of us, you know? But it doesn't. Unfortunately, it doesn't. But you, I said, we, we're in the line. We, we're not like we here in America. We, we're in Cuba. I know, probably. We're done. I'm just okay. It's after school. Is it after? Okay, we're done then. All right. But that's the point I wanted to make. It's, it's hard, but don't give up. Keep believing for your loved ones that are still in Christianity to get this truth and to come in and uh, uh, walk with us and not against us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody close this out in prayer. Want to make you close this out? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for just allowing us uh, today. We thank you for this wonderful day of rest. Uh, we thank you for each uh, each person that is represented here on today, Father, those that are represented abroad. We pray, Father, a special prayer for them, uh, those that are uh, lost a loved one on, on, on this week. Father, we pray that you will give them mm. comfort, give them shalom, yes. give them peace in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach. Father, we give your name glory, honor to where glory and honor and esteem is due. And Father, we pray that you will bless uh, the speaker that is that is already here, just got here. Father, we pray that you will bless her, bless her, uh, Ms. Makah. In the name of Yahushua Hamashiach, we pray these things and we thank you. It is so. It is so.